Thank you for coming up here, guys. So each Sunday, we have a special focus at church. And today, the focus is last judgment. Because when Jesus comes, he's going to judge the living and the dead. Unbelievers, sadly, will go to hell. Believers get to go to heaven. If you look at the windows over there, you've got three pictures of Jesus in the middle one. You've got Jesus holding the, the bread and the wine, you know, the body and blood and the Lord's Supper, giving that to us. And you see then one of Jesus kind of pointing, and he's on the clouds. Because he ascended into heaven um, after his resurrection, and he's going to come back in that same way on the last day. And the theme for this morning really is he's coming back, so let's be ready. So we want to be ready. And he used the picture of a lamp with oil in it. So this is a lamp like we have at church. You see the ones behind me? Like that are a, a, a light? So inside of this, you've got uh, a wick. So it's this like cloth thing, right? And then you've got the top. And then you've got in there. Is there anything in there? No. So it's like it goes, it doesn't go the whole way, but that's, that's so if I put this in here, Okay, now stand back. It's going to get pretty crazy in here. Ready? So it should light, right? Am I doing it right? Did it light? Why didn't it light? I was holding it the wrong way. Okay, maybe if you hold it. Okay, there we go. Did it light? Oh, man. Maybe we were both holding it the wrong way. Does anyone... What's supposed, what do you think is supposed to go in here? What do you think is supposed to go in there? Oil. So it didn't light because there was no oil. So it's kind of a useless lamp, right? But if we put oil in it, then it burns long and bright like back there. Today, in God's Word, Jesus says to be prepared, we need to have oil. We want to have oil enough for waiting for when he comes. So we're ready when he comes to welcome him. And so that oil that would be in our hearts is God's word. It's our Savior Jesus. It's his forgiveness, his love. And so as we come to church, we're being filled with that oil. As we read God's word, we're being filled with that oil. As we pray and think about all that God has done for us, forgiving our sins by Jesus' work on the cross, we're being filled with that oil. And so we're ready for Jesus to come back so we can welcome him and say, welcome back. We've been waiting for you. Let's pray and thank Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for making us uh, lamps, for giving us lamps of faith and, and that you fill us with the oil of your love, your forgiveness of faith, the Holy Spirit. And we ask you to be with us and bless us as we wait for you and look forward to the day you'll bring us home to heaven. In your name we pray, amen. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We love weddings. We love weddings. For, we make so many preparations for weddings. Uh, we look forward to them. It's the, this beautiful culmination of, of a, a man and woman joined together before God and witnesses, committing to love one another in the start of their beautiful life together. And the celebration that ensues as, as family and friends gather to celebrate people by dresses, suits, even wear a tux. You know, this is a lot of preparations and a lot of excitement and what a celebration. It's no wonder then that Jesus uses the picture of a wedding and a wedding banquet to describe what's going to happen when he comes back. When he comes back to gather in his church all those who have believed in him and, and to, to host this huge banquet for all eternity. And it's a day we look forward to. In God's word, especially here, as he uses this picture, he also gives the warning and encouragement that we want to always be ready. We want to always be prepared for his return. And so we hear, go out to meet the bridegroom. Be prepared and wise. And live each day in eager anticipation of his great arrival. Here are now the words of Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven, if we could have it on screen, please. Thank you. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. 
Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with the lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is God's word. Jesus often refers to the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And what he's referring to is not a physical location or place, but he's talking about his gracious rule in the hearts of believers by faith, the gospel, the good news of forgiveness in Jesus. And he rules in our hearts. That's his kingdom. And he says today that he wants us to be prepared for his return when he comes to bring us home and to be wise and prepared. Like the, you heard the, the ten virgins getting ready for the bridegroom to come, going out to meet him. Uh, we can think of like ten bridesmaids or the bridal party nowadays. Going out and they can't start until the groom, can't start the party until the groom gets there. And Jesus is the bridegroom. And we await his return and we want to be ready. Well, what makes us ready? The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. So there's something to this oil that is what prepares us. This oil that seems to be uh, available to all, but some uh, take it with them, some, some keep it as precious and, and are ready, and, and then those, there, are there, there are those who can also discard it, think it not valuable, and run ahead without it. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. Clearly, we want to be ones with oil. Well, what is the oil? It's God's forgiveness. It's the message of the gospel. It's our Savior Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit making our bodies his temple, creating faith in our hearts, sustaining it through the gospel and word and sacrament. And what is that gospel? The gospel is that wonderful news that even though we are sinners and we deserve the damnation in hell, God sent his Son to live a perfect life in our place where we had failed, where we had, where we had missed the mark where we had sinned, where we had fallen short of what God would demand of us, and we deserved hell for it, Jesus lived everything perfectly. And then was willing to credit that life that he lived to each and every one of us. And then in this, we would say awful, but now we realize great exchange, he took upon himself all of our sin, all of our guilt, all of our shame, all the things that keep us up at night, and then we regret all of it, Jesus took upon himself and he had his father punish him instead of us. And he suffered on that cross to pay for each and every one of our sins. So that the father looks at us and says, forgiven, justified, declared not guilty. And then Jesus laid in the tomb three days. But on the third day he rose again to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that what God promises, he fulfills. And when God says you are forgiven, you really are forgiven, and that he has prepared a place for you in heaven. He ascended into heaven, and he says, I'll come back in the same way you have gone, and I will take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. That is the gospel message, and that he goes with us each and every day. And so we fill up on that oil, we fill up on that gospel message as we're doing this morning, hearing the wonderful gospel sung by the choir, as we respond with our voices, as we hear Professor Scharf read from the scriptures, as you listen to this sermon, not just to check a box on your daily calendar, but to receive the life-giving words of God from our Savior Jesus. We go to baptism, we bring our infants, our children to be baptized because God has made a promise Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. 
Because God has made a promise that he makes us children of God through baptism, that he, he washes us clean of our sins, that he robes us with Christ's righteousness, really the only appropriate attire for a wedding that Jesus and a wedding banquet that Jesus hosts. We come to the Lord's Supper regularly to receive Christ's body and blood with the bread and the wine, to be strengthened that way and to receive that forgiveness and assurance that my sins too are forgiven. We go to the Word, we read it, we listen to it, we take it to heart, and, and we live our lives by it. This is what it is to fill up on this oil and how blessed we are to have an abundance of it overflowing and pouring into our hearts so that when we hear that call, the bridegroom comes, come out to meet him, that we are wise and prepared. What would it look like, though, to be unwise, to be unprepared? Because Jesus, as he addresses this group, is addressing his disciples, people who are following him, because he knew the dangers, he knew the devil's tricks, he knew that the deceptiveness of their sinful nature, the, the waywardness of the world, and the devil's fiery darts, and he wants each and every one of them to always be prepared for his coming. To not be afraid, but to know in trust and certainty that he is their savior and he will come back again. What does it look like to discard it? It's to... There's an old professor who's, who's long gone home to heaven, but he, he wrote uh, in an article once, he wrote that one of the devil's main tricks is to, in the, in the shop or the store of our lives and of this world, that the devil takes all the price tags and he switches them around. So the things that are truly valuable and lasting and worth something, he marks down in price and makes it look like they're, they're worthless or they're fleeting and he puts them on like the bottom shelf, kind of a way. And then the things that are the things of this life that might give instant pleasure but don't really fulfill, that make big promises but don't deliver, the things that, that many run after in this life, because of it he puts, he puts in a shiny box with a big heavy price tag on with glitter and all that and puts it on the big shelf, kind of clears space around it so everybody goes after that thing. What does that look like for us? It's when we look at God's word and we say, well, if I have time. We think of God's house and we go, you know, that's not going to fit into my schedule. I've got a lot of good things on my schedule. Or, God, I know how you want me to live, but I want to live my life. And I'm living my best life now, and that doesn't include you or your commands. So if I have time, I'll get back to you. And pretty soon, we walk the way of the world. And we dive into sin, or we let it fester in our hearts and think that this is the way, this is the answer. And all the while, walking further and further away from the oil we need of God's grace and forgiveness. But if we forget about sin and trying to ignore it or excuse it, then we don't really need a savior. And so what use have we of this oil? And we run ahead without it. But Jesus says, not you. Not you, brother and sister in Christ. You fill up on this oil. Be in the world, but not of the world. Live as children of God, and there are going to be times in your life when it departs from the way the world wants you to live or the things that it wants you to indulge in, whether it's your friends or your work or, or the people you meet or the people who are even close to you in your life. And then when you follow God's way instead, you'll face persecution and it will be hard and it will not be enjoyable. But you hold on to that oil. You be filled with it. Don't be tempted to give it up or leave it behind. And let that flame glow in your life. So you are a torch to those around you that with the love that you show, with the forgiveness you give, with the humble spirit you go about your day and your work and your care for others. Let that be a torch. And people will see it. And you have oil enough. And what a wonderful thing when the bridegroom returns, how glorious it will be to be welcomed by him into that party. And the door is shut behind us because it will never end. And all the loved ones who are there who have died in the Lord, and we get to reunite with them and see them, and most importantly, we get to be with the bridegroom, our Savior Jesus, to be with him face to face. And all the things that the world promises but never delivers on, Jesus gives us eternal pleasures at his right hand. Peace, true peace, lasting peace that we just taste of right now, that we hold on to right now, but we don't always feel there we'll have it. 
perfectly feeling it, never, never feeling inadequate, never feeling disappointed, never feeling discontent, but perfectly at rest, perfectly at peace and joy and happiness with him. But it will be hard, right? It's hard this life. This life is hard. We're not there yet. You ever been asked to be in a wedding, stand up in a wedding? Maybe you, in your own wedding? Maybe, a while, maybe some of you haven't, or it's okay, but you could picture it. Um, you are going to be in a wedding, and nowadays a lot of times there's a, a dress that you buy or a, a suit or a tux, and you get fitted for these things because you want it to fit just right. And then the wedding is still like nine months, 12 months out. I think in the old days they just got engaged, and then they borrowed a nice dress or suit and showed up at the parsonage and got married. Now we kind of lengthen this process out, and, which is okay, but if you live in the northern, well, for one reason, you live in the northern climates, um, you have a thing called seasons, and you have, you know, the nice summer, and you're active, and then you get into the, the fall, and then the winter, and the darkness sets in, and for some reason, some of us really like to eat a lot, and that affects how you're going to fit into that suit or that dress. And then, but you really have to be vigilant, right, to be prepared. And you go, well, I've got I to really cut down. I'm going to be on a diet, or I'm going to go out, and I'm going to exercise. I'm gonna, it's, it's work. Yes, it is. But is it worth it? As, as we get to that day and we're preparing for it and we, and we pull out the, the suit or the drop, get the tux or the dress and we look at it and we try it on and it fits perfectly and we're ready. And we go in and we stand up in the wedding and we support, we're overjoyed, we, we go to the, the party and we just have a blast and, it's, and we'd say, was it worth it? Absolutely. Was it difficult? Sure. But is it worth it? What are we preparing for? What are we being prepared for by Jesus as he gives us this oil and, and, and pours this out upon us and into us? We're being prepared for heaven, for the bridegroom's return. And in Jesus, you are prepared. Taking in that oil of his word, his love, his forgiveness, his sacraments. And so that when you hear that call go out, the bridegroom is here. Come out to greet him. We do. We're wise and prepared. And we've been waiting in eager expectation for his great arrival and how glorious it will be. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, for our stewardship thought, as we think about the blessings God has given to us and then our, our faithful use and stewardship of those blessings, we think of God's gift of young people, especially today as the Minnesota Valley Lutheran High School a cappella choir is with us. Um, we offer a prayer for our youth. We pray. Heavenly Father, you have gathered people of all ages into the communion of saints. Today we thank you especially for the gift of young people to your church. Keep them in your care. Protect them from the perils and temptations common to youth. Help them resist the pressure to engage in godless and immoral activity. When they become confused, show them the way. When they hurt, bind up their wounds. When they fail, restore them according to your mercy and keep the cross of Christ before their eyes. Bless them with good friends, competent teachers, faithful ministers, caring parents, supportive homes, and life-enriching experiences. Spare them from peril near and far. Bless them as they mature. Teach them the value of honest labor and faithful stewardship. Guide and direct them as they prepare for their life's vocations. Remind them that their highest joy is found in using talents and abilities in service to you. Help us to be a blessing to them and guide and support them. In Jesus' name, amen.